Hey everyone, it's Len from 1AAuto.com. Today we're going to be working on a 2006 Honda Civic. It's going to be a very simple job, a wheel cylinder. We're going to remove this one, we're going to replace it with this one. If you happen to need this or any other quality part, you can check into 1AAuto.com. Alright, so the first thing we're going to want to do is we're going to want to pop the hood, make sure it's securely supported so it can't fall down and hurt anybody. Next we're going to check the master cylinder, which is right here. This is the part that has your brake fluid in it. What it's, uh, the reason why we're checking it is to make sure that it has plenty of fluid inside of it because when we do the master cylinder or disconnect any brake line, you're going to have fluid loss. If this fluid goes low or even worse, empty, it could cause air inside your braking system, make its way down into the ABS unit. You could come up with an ABS light or worse, some safety issues such as lack of braking. Another thing to mention while we're here is we can take a look at the brake fluid cap and just read along it and you'll see dot three, dot four. So you want to make sure that you have dot three or dot four fluid available to you to fill it by the time you're done. Always make sure that you have your brake fluid caps secure. Just tighten that on and that's good. And then we'll get going on that wheel cylinder. All right, with your vehicle mildly supported off the ground, you want to make sure that the wheel is still touching the ground but not the complete weight of your vehicle. What we're going to do now is we're going to use a breaker bar or a long handle ratchet. We're going to use a 19 millimeter socket to loosen all five lug nuts. Once we have them a little bit loose, we can raise the vehicle and continue to um, loosen the rest of the lug nuts. Once again, this is just to break them free. You don't want to loosen them up very much. And there's all five. Now we're going to get it up in the air and we'll get to work on this. Now I can hold the wheel firmly with two hands and shake it around. It doesn't really move around too much. You might need to give it a little bit of a bonk. You don't want to hurt yourself. Don't use your hands. If you can't, you can use a rubber mallet on the back side of the wheel. Broke it free. I'm going to hold it secure as much as I can up against the vehicle. Remove the last lug nut, remove the hubcap, place those safely aside while holding the wheel. Now I'm going to use two hands, remove the rear wheel, roll that securely out of the way. Now we're at the point where we can see the drum brakes. You always want to inspect the condition of them, make sure they're in good condition. It's a little bit rusted, this is the outside, it's just cosmetic, it doesn't have to look pretty, it's behind a wheel. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to try to knock this a little bit with a hammer. You can also, if you have the ability, you can use some screws or bolts I should say. You turn the bolt clockwise inside this right here and that'll help push up against the hub on the inside and separate the drum from the hub. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to hit it with a hammer because that's something that most people have readily available. If it doesn't pop free, we'll go with plan B. So now what I'm going to try to do, a lot of people like to try to hit here and that's fine. The only problem with that is if you don't have good, good aim, you're not a baseball player for the Red Sox or whoever your favorite team is, you might hit one of these studs. Why not just stay away from it? We'll try to hit right along here. A couple love taps should break this puppy free. Wearing safety glasses, very important. Hold your hammer with two hands. You don't need to be a show off and one hand it. We're just gonna knock it. All right. As you can see, it didn't really break free. Something else that I was just thinking about is I would like to put one more lug nut back on here and that's just so in case this drum does come free, it won't come flying off, hit the floor, hit my foot, hit my knee, cause some form of bodily injury. All of that is bad. We'll grab a little bit of our penetrant spray, whatever it is that you like to use, that's your preference. I'm going to give it a couple more whacks, still wearing my safety glasses, right along this edge, staying away from these. These are your wheel studs. If you nick these and you bend over a thread, you can try to chase them off. That's going to be a pain in the butt. You might have to replace the stud. That's costly. Let's avoid both those options and just keep hitting right here. All right. I feel as though that broke free at this point. I'm going to grab it. As you can see, it does. Having this lug nut, in here is, uh, nut on here has been a wonderful idea because this drum hasn't come off and hurt anybody. 
You can try to work it with your hands. If it's a little stuck, what we can do is we can grab a pry bar, come in between the backing plate and the drum, and we'll just give it a little pry. Once it breaks free from here, we'll go over here and over here until it finally comes off. We've got our pry bar. Just gonna gently pry. We don't wanna try to bend this backing plate. Bending it out could cause issues further down the line, putting it back on. Feels like it broke free. Feels all right. Now I'm gonna remove this lug nut. Place it with the others. And continue removing this drum. Now while the drum's off, we can see that there's a severe amount of brake dust inside here, which just means the brakes have been doing their job. Your braking surface, which is your friction material, rubs on your drum surface, which is also a friction material, and what you get is this. It's a mess, um, but it happens. So we can put this inside, um, you can put it in a bag, you can put it in the trash, uh, anything but pouring it on the ground is a good idea. And then we're gonna inspect the brake shoes. We're gonna make sure that the shoes are in good condition. This one looks fine. This one right here, nice and thick, thinner, thinner, thinner. Depending on your state of residence, this might be almost to the point where your state inspection might be required. Um, your state inspector might require you to replace them. It looks as though it's still safe to me. Now we're gonna clean this up. I'm gonna dump out this dust and dispose of it properly, and then we'll get going on this wheel cylinder. All right, something that I wanted to mention is because we're gonna be taking the line off of the rear of the wheel cylinder, which is right back here, you can see the bleeder screw in the line. We're gonna to wanna to spray this down with some sort of penetrant. Whatever your choice is, use that. Give it a little spritz. Give it some time to soak. Once we're done doing that, we can let it soak for a little while and we're gonna come around to the front. What we'd like to do on the front is we're gonna clean this off the best we can so we have a clean working surface with everything we're gonna do. Something that's super important to mention is you never wanna use compressed air when it comes to using anything that has brake dust or dust of any sort. The reason for that is because the dust particles will become airborne you're gonna breathe them into your lungs. Your lungs have pores. It's gonna clog your lung pores. It's gonna cause major health issues down the line. If not today, you could be on the floor. Do not use any sort of compressed air to clean your braking system. All right, so now we're gonna get down to cleaning this puppy. The first thing that I like to do is make sure that you're wearing safety glasses. This is number one. Secondly, I like to mention that any type of brake clean that you're gonna use is gonna have some kind of aerosol or some form of um, some form of compressed air or whatever that's gonna blow something out, the fluid, right? And when you shoot fluid at something, it's gonna wanna splash back. Whether it's gonna splash back fluid or dusty fluid, um, you wanna make sure that you're wearing safety glasses, make sure that you have your face far enough away, you don't need to be up this close. And lastly, what I'd like to mention also is to make sure you have a, pr a proper receptacle for collecting all of your waste uh, materials, whether it's the brake cleaner, the brake dust, or even um, brake fluid once we crack this open. You wanna make sure that none of that's getting down into the ground. Mother Nature. So here we go. I'm gonna use a little bit of brush. I'm just gonna get off the majority of what I can. Less chances of more stuff flying around in the air for me to breathe in. I wanna live a long, long time. Whew. Boy, oh boy. So to continue brushing this off, like I said, I'm just gonna try to get as much of this crud off as I can. Less that's airborne, the better. Seems as though I got the majority of it off at this point. Now I can use my spray, brake cleaner. No air, like I said, we're not using any compressed air. Standing back as far as I can, I'm gonna make sure that I'm spraying at a point where it won't be coming back and hitting my face or anybody that might be around. I'm just gonna start at the top, because gravity works. You can see a little bit of dust coming off. Short burst like this is great because it'll give it a little bit of time to run off. So you can go like that. You can even get even crazier, which is something that I like to do. Get it nice and clean. Now we can go a little longer burst because we know that we got the majority of any brake dust off that might get airborne. And that looks pretty good net right now because we're gonna do a little bit more cleaning once we get the wheel cylinder off. We still have to clean the hub and clean the drum before we put it back on. So that looks great for now. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move my bucket and receptacle out of the way so in case I drop anything, it won't go in and I don't have to go diving for it. All right, so now I got my 10 millimeter wrench on there. I used a flare end wrench so it has 
a lot of grip onto where I'm going. I'm just gonna give this a couple bonks. Normally you wanna turn to the left, but since I'm working from the other side of the wheel cylinder, I'm gonna use a mirror image, pretend I'm on the other side, and this time I'm going to the right. Give it a couple good bonks. Feels like it broke free. Let's say that it didn't. Bonk, 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 nothing happened. Next step might be what? We're gonna throw a little heat on it, right? No, no, no. Why don't we put heat on it? Because we just use brake clean on the front side of this, or brake cleaner, I should say. That brake, uh, brake cleaner residue is still inside here. There's still a lot of fumes up in here. You come in with a torch, you wanna heat it up, because that's, why not? You're gonna have a lot of heat in your face, we'll say, and or less beard. I love my beard, and I love my eyes. So, now that we got this line broken free, we can work it back and forth a little bit. That feels like it's gonna work out nice. Thank God we sprayed that down. Perfect. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna come at these last two bolts right here. Let's check the size on them real quick with the wrench we have. They feel as though they're 10 millimeters as well, but I'm not gonna use this flare end wrench. I'm gonna use my regular wrench. I'm gonna see if I can grab onto it all the way around and see if I can break those free. Once we... I'm just gonna bonk them, get them both going. Here we go. Now we can just get these out the rest of the way. And this part comes after we already loosened the line, of course, as we mentioned before. We're going step by step here, right? Don't jump ahead on me. And you could try using a ratchet back there if you want. There's limited space. Uh, you could try using a ratchet wrench. You also have the same issue where there's limited space. Um, takes a couple extra seconds with a wrench. I know it seems like it's less efficient. Um, you know. Everybody likes to do things faster, and so do I. But for the sake of what we're doing here, we'll just do it this way. Continuing to go to the right, because we're working on the back side of the backing plate. That feels pretty good. Now we got that the majority of the way off. We're gonna continue taking off this brake line. Once we break this brake line free, what's gonna happen is fluid's gonna come out. Gravity works, the master cylinder's up high. It's gonna wanna work its way down through the whole system, up through here, down your flex hose, into your wheel cylinder. Once fluid starts coming out, you have a limited amount of time to be able to get this bolt out, get your wheel cylinder in or out, and then get your new one back in and start doing this line again. So you wanna make sure you have everything ready to go at your disposable, or disposal. Also, you wanna make sure that you put your bucket back under here. I took mine away because I didn't wanna breathe in the fumes anymore. Uh, but brake fluid's gonna be dripping down, so to protect the environment, um, I'm gonna put the bucket back. We're gonna continue taking off this line. I'm gonna make sure I have my new wheel cylinder ready, and uh, that's where we're gonna go from here. All right, so we're back. I got my bucket down here to collect anything that might fall down so it doesn't fall into the ground and pollute the atmosphere or ozone or the earth, really. Um, something that I'd like to mention is when we're doing these, like I had said before, we're gonna get a little bit of brake fluid coming out. You can have two options here, or three options, I guess, technically, but two of them are better than the other third. Um, and that's basically, we want to either pinch this line, so that'll stop the, uh, the fluid from coming out, or once you have the line off, you can place this over your brake fitting, slide it over, and then rest this up against the open end of the line so brake fluid stops coming out. Whatever you prefer is the best method. Um, lastly, if you don't have either of these tools, you can do the drip method and then just pick up your mess after. I'm gonna go ahead and do this, it's the easiest. Just crimp it, you don't have to go too crazy. You don't, you know, I know you're Hercules, but just get it on there. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna finish off taking off this line with a 10 millimeter wrench. <clears throat> Excuse me. Turning to the right, as we mentioned. We go starting to get pretty close it feels once we get this line complete to the point that it's all done wanting to come loose we're gonna go ahead and take off that last bolt looks like maybe just a little half a turn here that's nice and free this right here is your brake line fitting you can check the uh, condition of your fitting lines I mean fitting threads if you'd like that looks fine lastly we're gonna take off this and then we'll get the wheel cylinder right out of here should be nice and loose I would say I could grab it from my hands, but I can't get them back there. So we'll just continue removing it with the wrench. All 
right? It's gonna be hard to hold onto it without dropping it, but I got it. And this is what the bolt looks like. There's a second one already on my cart waiting for me. I'm gonna put it right with the other. Now we're at the point that this wheel cylinder is ready to come out. We can use a pry bar, try to come between the wheel cylinder and the backing plate if it's stuck. This one feels pretty loose, but I'm just gonna go ahead and show you what I would do here with my pry bar. You can go right behind here, just give it a little pop, pull it away, come right here. Pulls away nice, doesn't it? Yeah, that feels good. Now we can come through one of these holes, lift it up, trying to hold on to it and making sure that you don't get anything hitting your face. Pops right out. We're gonna compare it to our new part. Looks about the same to me. We're gonna prep this wheel cylinder for installation. We notice that we don't have any fluid leaking out, so we're not in too much of a rush because I crimped the line right here with my line crimpers. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take off this bleeder screw cover, put that aside where we won't lose it. We can put it with the other bolts. Using an eight millimeter wrench, we're gonna try to remove this bleeder screw right here. Should break free fa fairly easily. Yep, we'll take that right out and that's gonna be out of our way for when we try to start that line. Lastly, we can remove this. This is just a little rubber boot. Keeps moisture out during shipping and handling and manufacturing, I don't know, whatever. Lastly, <clears throat> the way that this is gonna be sitting in, we notice that these aren't lined up with the way that the shoes are. Boy, what are we gonna do now? It must be wrong, Len. Nope, we're just gonna take our wrench, give it a little turn. Turns easy peasy, I'll make it look hard though. <sighs> Next, same. <sighs> just kidding. Anyway. We're gonna come in from the top and we're gonna slide it in. Just slide it in. We want the shoe, well, let me pull it back out. Right here, you can see where the wheel cylinder is gonna ride, right there and right there. That's gonna sit right inside that wheel cylinder piece right here. If you have a little bit of silicone paste and you like to do that, you can put a little bit there, a little bit there. That's completely up to you, it's your preference. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go from the top, as I mentioned, I'm gonna pull this shoe. There we are, sets right in. I'm gonna come over here, I'm gonna pull this shoe. Being careful for pinch points, safety first. Get it in there. Perfect. Now that that's in like that, you remember the next step, right? We're gonna start the line on the back side. The reason for starting the line on the back side before those two bolts is because we need to be able to move this wheel cylinder around. If you wanna come around to the back side here, you can take a look. Moving the wheel cylinder around, this is nice. I can use my fingers, I can turn that brake line fitting. It's going in beautifully actually. Boy, I can almost probably tighten this thing up all the way by hand. Now, nah, I'll use the wrench. Back to our 10 millimeter. We don't need to completely tighten this up, like I said before, but we are gonna make sure that we got a couple good threads in there. Now that I've got those in there, I can still move the wheel cylinder around. I'm gonna grab my other two 10 millimeter head bolts and I'm gonna come in from the backside and I'm gonna start both of those in. None of this is fully tightened up yet. It's important to remember that. I'm gonna do my first one and I'm sorry that my hands are in your way, but I'm sure you can imagine what I'm doing. Started that first one. Give it a couple more threads. It's definitely not fully tight, right? That's what I said. Next one's a little harder to get to, that's okay. We like a challenge. Get that one started. A few good threads. Love it, I love it. Now we're gonna go back to our 10 millimeter wrench. We're gonna continue tightening up that line till it's nice and snug. We don't need to reef it on there very hard. You know, just snug. I'm turning to the left because I'm working in a mirror, essentially. I'm working on the front side of something that I'm, that the uh, part that I'm working on is on the back side. So I'm going the opposite way, opposite day. I'm gonna continue tightening that. I can feel it getting a little bit more stiff. It's getting even stiffer. That feels pretty good, it bottomed out. Here's what I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna give it a little bonk, right? Why not? Bonk, bonk, here we go. 
nice and snug. Lastly, what we're gonna do is we're gonna tighten up these two bolts. I'm gonna use the open end. This might take a second. Since they're already both started, or they're both already started, I can go ahead and tighten these right down. Bonk, bonk. <laughs> Getting snug. Here we go. Now I'm gonna use the box end again with my 10 millimeter wrench. Bonk, bonk. All right. We successfully installed this portion of the uh, wheel cylinder. The last thing that we're gonna do for installation of the uh, wheel cylinder is we're gonna grab our um, bleeder screw. We're gonna start that in, but we're gonna leave it loose. I'm gonna grab that. This is what it looks like. What happens is, is when it goes into the wheel cylinder, you screw it in. Inside the wheel cylinder, there's a little beveled area that once you have it fully tightened, this plugs the little hole in the backside. When you loosen it up, it pulls away and fluid can escape past into that little hole and then come out of here. Getting it started is always the hard part. You don't have much room back here. There we are. Love it. <clears throat> All right, so I got that started in. I'm not going to tighten it down because I want to show you something. With our bucket down here, or drain tube, or whatever you've got, anything but the ground, we're going to release this to line locks, release pressure, and now if you come back around to the back side, we're going to wait a little bit, and you're going to see a little trickle of fluid coming out. Once you see that trickle of fluid coming out, we're going to go ahead and close it, and then we're going to continue on to the next step. All right. We got some fluid trickling out of here pretty good. I'm wearing a glove, I'm okay to do this. You definitely don't want to get brake fluid on your hands. If you do, make sure you clean them as quickly as possible. We got brake fluid coming out. It looks good. It's going into our recycling bucket. I'm gonna go ahead and tighten that up for now. We don't have to reef down on it because we're gonna be opening it back up in a little while. I got it snug. I'm not even gonna bonk it. All right, so our next step, we're gonna clean up our hub the best we can. For this purpose of the video, I'm going to use a little wire brush. The reasoning behind this is I want to try to get as much extra debris or any type of uh, deposits or anything like that off of there that I can that might get in between the drum surface and the hub braking surface or the hub surface. And that's because that'll cause a brake pulsation and or premature brake uh, warping. All right, so what we have here is a premium quality, well, definitely not premium or quality at this point, but let's, assuming, let's assume that you're doing your rear brakes. This is what your drum looks like. For some reason, you don't have the money or you don't have the part, whatever it might be. You're gonna wanna try to get off the majority of this rust and rot right here. So what you wanna make sure is that you're wearing safety glasses, safety for your hands, something to cover your hands. You don't wanna get rust or anything cutting into your hands or poking into your eyes. Safety first is the number one concern at 1A Auto. So what we can do is we can take a chisel or a pry bar, as long as it has the pry bar end on it and it's not just plastic because you don't want anything chipping off. You can put it on here and you can give it a couple whacks. Watch your ears, it might get loud for a second. And if you choose to spend the time doing that, you can go all the way around the whole drum and that would hopefully take care of all the areas where your drum rot is reaching up against your um, reaching up against your backing plate and it could cause noise. By doing that, it's also gonna help eliminate a lot of the areas that's creating heat for your brakes um, because everywhere that this is touching your backing plate is also creating drag, which causes heat. So you could either do that, go all the way around. You could uh, leave it as it is and just deal with the noise if you have any, or you can go on 1aauto.com and replace this part. All right, so we're gonna make sure that we clean up this mating surface the best we can. This is the part where the hub on your vehicle connects onto the drum. We just did the hub. Now we're gonna do the drum. Using a wire brush like this, it might not be the best, but it's better than nothing. All right, now that we have our drum mating surface cleaned up and we have our uh, hub mating surface cleaned up, we're gonna go ahead and put this drum on, being careful of any pinch points. 
Get it on there. You can give it a little spin. You could try making it go round and round if you want. You might hear a little noise. That's up to you if you want to correct it or not. By the condition of this drum, I'm really not going to worry about it at this point for the purpose of this video. All right, we've got our Next safety one. glasses on. We're going to move over to the master cylinder. We're going to open it up because we did close it. Double check. It does say dot three or dot four brake fluid. Very important to use those specific fluids and not dot five brake fluid. I'm going to use dot three. You can use one that says dot three and dot four. I'm going to go right up to that max line. You see the max line, MAX? Being careful not to spill any of this. Brake fluid will eat the paint off your car. You spill any on the paint in your car, wash it off, ASAP. That looks like it's pretty close. It's close enough for my comfort right now because what we're gonna do is we're gonna put this back on. We don't want any moisture getting absorbed into the master cylinder or into the brake fluid. Then we're gonna go out back, like I said, we're gonna open up that brake bleeder. We're gonna let it trickle out to the point that there's no air coming out whatsoever. And then we're gonna lastly finish up right here. Go inside the vehicle and we're gonna step on that brake slowly three to five times. Bring in. Just give it a press. One, two, and so on. All right, now we can get out and we're gonna go back to that brake bleeder. I got my eight millimeter wrench again. I'm gonna be turning it to the right because I'm working on the back side of the backing plate. Give it a couple turns if you want. It really only has to be broken free a little bit. And we're gonna wait for that to come out in a solid stream. I'm wearing a glove so I can use my finger. It's coming out beautifully. So we'll just wait a little bit. I'm not in much of a rush. I think that looks good. I don't see any little air bubbles trying to come out. I'm going to close it up, turning to the left because I'm working on the back side. And then what we do is we would clean this up. We're going to make sure that we put the cap back on there. And then we're going to test drive the vehicle and make sure that there's solid braking ability and make sure that that master cylinder is full now that we're done the job. All right, now we're going to put the wheel up onto the drum. We're going to hold it with one hand so it can't go anywhere and start grabbing some lug nuts. We're also going to grab our hubcap and get that started on here, holding the wheel so it can't fall off and hurt anybody. I'm going to start one lug nut over here. We'll start one lug nut over there. A few good threads. Now we're clear to let go of this wheel and we can grab our other lug nuts and we'll get those tightened up and then we'll get the specific torque spec for this vehicle, which should be 80 foot pounds. I'm just snugging these up in a crisscross pattern. And then when we do go to torque them down, we're also gonna go in a crisscross pattern. You don't go around in a circle, because if something's off kilter, that's the way you're gonna tighten it up. You're gonna drive down the road and your wheel's gonna look like this. Right. Now yeah. using our 19 millimeter socket, and it's a half inch drive on what I'm using, so I'm gonna use a half inch drive torque wrench set to 80 foot pounds. I'm gonna do a crisscross pattern, basically a star on this particular vehicle. There's one, two, Three, four, five. For good measure, we'll just go back around one more time. Maybe you lost count, you got distracted. I don't know, you can't count. All right, now we're just gonna clean this up, making sure that we're wearing our safety goggles. Around over here, just give it a little spray. We don't need to go too crazy. Now that I've got that cleaned down, I'm gonna use my bleeder screw cover. It just covers over the end there. And this makes sure that no debris, moisture, or anything else gets in there. That's on good. And that's it. Should be good to go. Thanks for watching. Visit 1AAuto.com, your place for DIY auto repairs, for great parts, great service, and more content.